Hey guys, it's Kay, and I wanted to have a, ch a quick chat before I started the video today. Um, I know that in the last part of one of my previous videos, I talked to you guys about knowing your self-value and knowing your worth to the world. I want to just take another chance to reiterate that message. Something has happened to me this morning. Um, and I feel like it's, it's given me the motivation to want to get really get that message out into the world again. And really strongly this time, I'm going to put it at the front of the video so that people see it and uh, don't skip it. <laughs> because I don't, I, not everyone gets to the end of the video. So um, your personal value is something that you are probably underestimating. And don't let anyone, regardless of their position, your relationship with them, diminish your actual value to society, to the world, to your family, to your job, to life in general. So I want to tell a story about what my life was as a young singer. So I started singing when I was 14. And I mean, I started piano when I was nine and started singing when I was 14. And I loved early music. I always wanted to sing early music. I just didn't have that much confidence. So I went to Boston Conservatory. I was very glad to be accepted there. Um, and I got A's and high marks at my juries. Um, but I didn't have any confidence in my own abilities because I had some technical issues that I'm just now fixing at age 42, 40, almost 42, 41. Um, so I went to grad school and I got a master's in classical vocal performance and thought I'm not good enough to make it as a singer. I'm gonna quit. After four years of studying classical music in college and after two years of studying classical music in grad school. So I got a so I got an administrative job. I worked as a music librarian at Boston Ballet. It was the most fun job of my life and six months into the job I got laid off um, but I continued to work with Boston Ballet like as a contract employee for a while. It was really um, I'm, I'm sad that I didn't have that job for longer because um, it was really fun and I had a great time. Anyway I worked in administration for a while and I didn't I did not sing okay I did not sing I didn't audition for anything because I didn't think that I was worth being paid I didn't think that I was worth anything because I was comparing myself to everyone I graduated with and that is poisonous behavior po so poisonous so in 2000 Eight, I started singing again. I started taking voice lessons. I wasn't really able to work through a lot of my technique issues that I had, but you know, I worked through some of them and I was able to get some gigs. I went out and auditioned, and but I never really sort of made, I never really went in like full force because I just had so low confidence in my abilities because I just had these technical issues which I couldn't work out. And I didn't know how to help myself. And but I still loved early music. I love Bach is like my favorite like composer of all time. I could listen to Bach all day long for the rest of my life with no complaints. And I probably could because he wrote so much music that I probably could listen to Bach all day long for the rest of my life and probably not get through the entire catalog. I had a situation where I was mistreated. Um, professionally. But when it's professional and you're a singer, it's also personal. Your instrument is inside you. It's very intimate. It can be, it can get in your head. It can really get in your head and it damages you as a singer. And I took that experience and sort of rolled with it for a while and then decided that I was going to give more healthy things 
the place that they deserve and take away the things that were harmful professionally and uh, emotionally. And I just want to say that you should always, always listen to your gut. My gut has never been wrong. I have never like thought something and then it hasn't happened. Um, with the exception of like crazy, like anxious thoughts, like something's going to happen to me, you know, tomorrow, I, like that stuff usually doesn't happen, but stuff that you feel about people, stuff that you feel about experiences, stuff that you feel about your job, stuff that you feel about, um, you know, your relationship with your pets or your loved ones or whatever, instinctual feelings that you feel in your gut. I have never known those to be wrong. Never. So I want to encourage you, if, especially if you're a young singer. I am not a young singer anymore. I wish I was, but I'm not. Um, and a, but I'm recovering from being in a really unhealthy place as a singer and you and it's very easy to get in an unhealthy place as a singer. I mean I don't want to make it sound like it's bad, but the instrument is inside you. It is you you can get into and it's a lot about how you look also. There is um a lot of there's a lot of stake in how you dress, how your hair is, how your makeup looks, how you know, how you present yourself. It's, there's it's things that they talk about on those jury sheets. So it, it's very wrapped up in you, you know? Um so I want to encourage young singers and anyone who's having um, personal doubts about their abilities and their stuff to have a realistic vision about, you know, be self-aware, but at the same time, know what your value is. That's a very fine line between being self-aware and knowing what your actual value is and not settling for less. Do not settle, and now I'm getting angry, do not settle for less than your personal value that you realistically know. Don't settle in relationships. Don't settle in friendships. Don't settle in uh, pro professional relationships. And don't settle um, in your relationship with yourself that you don't have value. You have value. Look at yourself objectively, you can see what it is. And it is possible to look at yourself and your talents and stuff objectively and you know be self-aware. But don't accept less. Don't let anybody tell you you're less. Don't let anybody treat you like you're less. Make impacts. Be nice. Spread love. Spread your talents and abilities and goodness. Don't let anyone dull your shine. And everyone has bad days. Even I have bad days. You can see I'm having kind of a bad day. But don't let anyone dull your shine or tell you you're less than or treat you like you're less than because you're not. Okay, I'm gonna go get off the camera and I'm going to uh, Sephora with my friend Sarah. So I'll take you guys with me. Let's dry the tears and let's shop for some makeup I don't need. Word. <laughs> okay, so it's like 4.15 and I'm back. I didn't film anything shopping. I just, I hadn't seen my friend in a couple of months and we had a lot to catch up on. I just wanted to take a few hours and you know spend time with her kind of catch up bond and we had a lot of stuff to, to talk about and she is also a singer so she knows <laughs> exactly what I was feeling and I told her about the whole situation and uh, you know we were able to sort of make each other feel better about stuff and um, funny thing though um, so I had a little bad karma this morning bad stuff happened this morning but um, later in the afternoon I was offered uh, a better gig in uh, spring and it's a great opportunity 
uh, it'll be like solo stuff, recording mate, every, it's, I'm very excited. So things have a way of turning around, you just have to respect yourself enough to let the good things come to you. So we were at the Prudential Center in Boston, which was so fun to go to, we went to Sephora because I had to buy an eyeliner, but you know I bought more stuff too. And um, we went to Lord & Taylor, I didn't, ha I didn't plan on buying anything there, but I'll show you what I got. I'm very excited. <laughs> Okay, I didn't buy this hoodie, I already had that. <laughs> but, oh, from Sephora, I got a couple of things. I got, um, because I'm a junkie, I got the Norvina palette. I've been looking at this for weeks and wanting to buy it. I'm very excited to use it. It's all like pinks and purples. Um, so, I don't, you girl loves a good pink and purple eyeshadow. I'm so all about this life and I swatched it in the store and I'm very excited to try it out. I got a new liquid eyeliner because I'm gonna throw that, um, one from the L'Oreal went away because it's getting, it's like almost dried up and I hate it. So I got a Sephora brand one that seemed pretty good. So I'm going to try that one out. It's like $14. Pretty good price. And I got one of these, another one of these stupid expensive fresh lip balms that are like $24. But um, I'm so addicted to them because they feel really good on the lips. They're really moisturizing. I got a new color. This is coral. And I think it looks really cute on. I'm wearing it now. I don't know. It's tinted lip, it's tinted lip balm. Do we like her? Do we think she's cute? Mm, 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 mm. And I got a little sample of the Beauty Blender cleanser stuff, so we'll try this out. I've never, I've actually never tried this to clean my Beauty Blenders and my brushes, so we'll, we'll, give, we'll give her a try, we'll see if she's good. And I don't remember the last time I really bought a pair of shoes, like ever, and I saw these in Lord & Taylor and I couldn't resist because they were on super duper sale. Okay, they have crabs on them. Come on. I mean... Are they not the cutest? Well, I mean, I think they're so cute because they have crabs on them and I'm from Maryland. So I just have a sort of soft spot when it comes to things with, with crabs on them. But like, how cute are these for like the last few days of summer? Oh my gosh. Clover, they're not yours right now. They're not. He was here for a long time by himself, but he did really good. He just slept because he was playing with his friend this morning. Okay, let's put these in the closet. Ba -ba -da -da -ba -ba -ba. Yay! Oh my god, the backs are so cute. I didn't know they had a little button on them. Oh my god, I love them. So in today's decluttering video, we are going to, it's day 23? Day 23, I think, and that's jewelry and accessories. So um, today is also going to be really cutthroat because I have been wearing the same jewelry and accessories for the last, like, year, and I never wear anything different. So I think today I'm going to be getting rid of a lot of stuff, and um, we're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun. So beside my vanity is this little cute jewelry organizer, and I know there's stuff in here I'm not going to wear ever, so I'm going to take it and uh, move it out of my collection now. Uh, the first thing is this necklace. I don't think I've ever worn this. I don't know where it came from either. Um, I mean, it's, she's cute, but I never, I'm not really a necklace girl. I only want to keep necklaces I really wear, um, all the time. So this one I've never worn and I'm never going to wear it. I've had it for years. All the rest of the necklaces I pretty much go for. Um, maybe not this one. It's, this is a little bit overwhelming for my frame. She's kind of big. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I actually kind of like this for like a concert or something. She's kind of cute. Um, I don't know. No. Some of these things aren't really my style. This one I've had for a long time and I wear sometimes. Um, so this one I wear. Um, every All these earrings I wear. This stuff I wear. I actually do like these necklaces. Okay, I lied. I'm not going to be getting rid of that much stuff today because I think... I've curated my collection pretty well, actually. Um, but this bracelet, I don't think, I, I don't even know where it came from, and I never wear it, so let's let go of that. Uh, this stuff I wear. Oh, I, I made this for my wedding. Isn't it cute? It's like rose gold and pearls. I thought it was really cute. I made it for my wedding, and I'm never going to let go of it, so it's just special, and I, I like it. Uh, let's see what else is happening here. All these necklaces are good. A little Eiffel Tower necklace I like. <laughs> My husband got me this little um, Eiffel Tower pendant because we went on our honeymoon in Paris and I love it so much. So I just wanted to show it to you guys. I thought it was cute. Okay, well I guess I'm done with the necklaces and stuff. I don't like these earrings. 
So I'm going to move these out of my collection. Um, there's nothing wrong with them. I just don't like them. Oops, it fell down. Let's see. I've never reached for them any time in my collection. The rest of these earrings, I think that I've worn them. These, my husband gave me these, but they're... What's wrong with the metal? Do I need to clean these? I think I need to investigate whether or not I need to clean them or not. Um, they look a little dirty. The rest of these look pretty good, actually. I don't have that many things in my collection that I don't wear. Um, yeah. What's wrong with me? Why did I think I was going to get rid of a bunch of stuff? I wear all these earrings, and I like them a lot. Well, ain't that something. Okay, so the jewelry is done. Um, if you have unused jewelry, and it's like costume jewelry, like that stuff is not the expensive stuff, you can totally donate it. There's a place called Dress for Success, which helps women get back on their feet. They're always looking for donations. You can donate to Goodwill, actually. Um, you can donate to a lot of places. There's even places online. I'm going to put some resources down in the description, description box below so that you can donate your jewelry that you're not using or anything that you... Um, fine would be to get a better home someplace else so um as well as jewelry let's go and look at some accessories and see if there's anything that needs to go in there that needs scarves uh hats um and possibly bags i don't like we probably have bags too i don't think i have any bags to go but let's just check the belts make sure we're all good there all right let's look at belts <laughs> let's see i wear this belt i wear this belt i wear this belt um, this belt is good. You know what belt I don't wear, though, is this belt. She's got to go. Um, and these belts, this belt I don't wear anymore. It's still good, though, but we're going to pass her on. This belt is fabulous, and we love her. We definitely wear her. Okay, so that's where my belts are living, by the way, this, like, little space. So we've got two belts leaving, and, oh, my steamer is, like, just hanging out. Sorry, Clover. So there it is. Kind of short video today with the decluttering. I always think I'm going to get rid of more stuff and then I don't. <laughs> but I think I got rid of some stuff today that I wasn't using and it's just, it, if you get rid of like one thing it sort of makes you feel better. Um, but we've gotten through a lot of the days of the challenge so this is going really well. I forgot what is tomorrow. Let's take a look. Tomorrow appears to be garage and storage. So I have to go through my storage unit. I won't show that. For security but we can talk about it so I'm just gonna end the video by saying um, when one door closes another door opens and you never know what's waiting around the corner just believe in your own talent and value and uh, today's been a sort of emotional up and downs I hope that you guys enjoyed this video I'm sorry I cried um, <laughs> if you guys like videos like this please subscribe I don't know this is not like no normal content but it just is what it is today. It's vlogest. We're doing a video every day. It might not be like house stuff. It might be other stuff. So tomorrow we're going to do garage and storage and we're probably going to do a clean with me video. <laughs> so I hope you guys are having a great day or a great evening or a great night wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Sweet Bubba. Yes, you are. See?